In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called Pacific Atlantic Water Flow. So we're given an m times an integer matrix, heights representing the height of each unit cell in the continent. Uh, the Pacific Ocean touches the continent's left and the top edges, and the Atlantic Ocean touches the continent's right and bottom edges. So water can only flow in four directions, top, down, left, Right, and water flows from from a cell to an adjacent cell to adjacent cell with an equal or lower height. Uh, so you can see here, basically, if I want to go to the next cell, right? If this is if this is the starting point, if I want to go to this cell, is it possible? But I cannot go to this cell because this cell has a height of three, and this cell has a height of two. So that's not possible to go from this cell to this cell. But we can go only top left, right, down, right? We cannot go diagonal, and we can only go to the cell that is uh, that is less than or equal to the current cell's value. And we want to return a list, of uh, a list of grid coordinates where water can flow to both Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. So you can see here, those edges are touching. That represents the Pacific Ocean, and those edges are basically represents the Atlantic Ocean, right? And you can see here, we have a couple answers. So we have this, this. So these coordinates can both go to the Pacific and the Atlantic Ocean. And the reason is that because you can see here, uh, because this cell, right, this edge right here is touching the Pacific and this edge is right here touching the Atlantic. So this cell can go here, no problem, right? And same thing here, if, I, if this cell right here can also go here can also go to the left because we can go to a cell that's equal to the current cell's value, but not bigger than, right? So in this case, I can go to here and then this cell can go down here to a Pacific Ocean, right? Because this cell is touching the Pacific Ocean. And this cell right here can also go to, go down here, right? So, but the thing is that this cell cannot go back right cannot go to the atlantic ocean because you can see there's no way for the cell to go down right even though if i go this way it's not working this way it's not working um even though you go this way but there's still like a six right and you cannot go to the right so in this case it's not going to work but you can see here we have this cell right here this cell this cell this cell so far right and then in this case we, we also have seven right so so far we have those elements so seven, you can see we can go this way, we can go this way, that's no problem. These elements are all less than seven. And six, the same thing, I can go here, I can also go here, five is less than seven, five is less than six, I should say. And then here you can see we can also have five go both direction, it's because here you can see five can go here and here, right? So you can see that we have those coordinates and at the end we wanna return those coordinates in a list of integer, right? In a list of list integer. Um, and then basically for each list is representing the coordinate. So this is the row, which row, and the, which the index of the row and index of the, the column, right? So how can we solve this problem? So to solve this problem, uh, one way we can do this is we can uh, basically for each and every single cell, right? The brute force approach is that for each and every single cell that we have in our table, we're going to do a search. Uh, either BFS or DFS, and then we're going to search to see if the cell can be able to reach to the bottom, bottom right, or the top left, right? If this cell can be able to reach both the bottom left, uh, sorry, the top left and the bottom right, then this cell can be able to reach both both ocean, right? But this cell will be added onto our result list. But this will give us, we're going to have a lot of duplicate uh, computation, right? Because if if I want to know if this cell can be able to go to the bottom right, I need to go. I need to know if this cell can be able to go to the bottom right, and I need to know if this value is actually bigger than this value or not, right? So you can see that there's a lot of compute steps because I have to compute. I have to know if those two cells can be able to do it, and then I iterate to the next cell. In this case, I have to do the same thing, right? So what I can do is I can do it the the other way. In this case, what I can focus on is uh, try to. Uh, focus on the first row, the first column, and then we're basically do a search and then try to visit the cells that can that are uh, bigger than the current cells value, bigger than or equal to the current cells value, right? And then once we visit that, we can store that in our uh, in our visit table uh, for the Pacific Ocean, 
And then what we're going to do is we're basically just going to do the same thing for the Atlantic Ocean as well. So we're going to have a table that starts, uh, that basically has uh, mark visited cells as visited. And we're starting at the bottom right. So the last column and the last row. And then what we're going to do is that we're going to do a search and then try to visit the cells that are uh, that are currently bigger than or equal to the current each and every single cell's value. And at the end, we're going to compare two tables to see the cells that are uh, both marked as true or both visited in the two tables ocean, right? And at the end, you will see that the cells that are both visited to uh, in 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 the two tables right, are both can be able to go to the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean, right, because they can be able to go from the top left to the current cell, and then they can also go to the bottom right, fr from the bottom right to the current cell, right. So you can see that this will be, uh, we're just going to do a linear scan to scan the entire grid. And for each and every single coordinate, if those cells are visited, for, from both tables, then we can just add the current coordinate onto our result list. Otherwise, we're just going to continue to search, right? So at the end, we're just going to uh, return the result, um, uh, the result list, right? So let's take a look at the BFS way to solve this problem. Um, so basically, what I did here is I have a function, right? So basically, it takes the heights, uh, the 2D heights in integer array, and then we're going to have a uh, result list, right? A result list that stores the the coordinates so first we define a queue and what we're going to do is that we're going to add the row so basically just like how we did here we just initialize the pacific ocean so to do a bfs we basically have to add each and every single coordinates right so these are coordinates that we're going to start to do our search so we have to add them onto our queue right so once we add them onto our queue the first so i have a function called add row and add column Basically, what it does is that you give me a row that you want to iterate, right? You give me a row number, like which row you want to add onto the queue. Then I will just do a I will just do a search to add those coordinates onto our queue. And same thing for the column. You give me which column you want to add, uh, which column that you want to traverse to add all the values on that column to the queue. Then I will just add them onto our queue, right? So this is what the function does. And then basically, what I do here is that I uh, call this BFS function. I pass in the queue, right? So now we have those uh, coordinates, right? So coordinates, we use a integer array uh, with size of two. So the first element is basically the row and the second element is the column. And then once I have this defined, I will basically do a BFS search, right? So you can see here, I can do a BFS search. So I have this tape, uh, this function basically returns a 2D Boolean array, which basically marks the visited cells, right? The cells that can be visited to true and cells that are not visited false. So what we're doing here is that while the queue is not empty, right? So while the queue is not empty, we can continue to do our BFS. So in this case, we pull the, the, the first element out of the queue and then we check to see if it's visited. If it's not visited, right? Then we continue. Otherwise, we just can. Uh, if it's visited, we continue. Otherwise, we do the following. So in this case, we first mark the cell to visited, and then we're going to compare. So if we can be able to go to the right, right. In this case, if we go, if we can be able to go right, then sorry, if we can be able to go to top, I should say, then in this case, we check to see if the cell that we are about to uh, visit is actually bigger than or equal to current cell's value. If it is then we also want to see if it's not visited, right? If it's not visited, then we can go add it onto our queue so that we can visit it later, right? And then in this case, what we can do is uh, we also do the same thing, right? So in this case, uh, for our left, for the right, for the down as well, right? And it doesn't really matter for this function. Like I now I think about it, like you don't have to put visit it here because you kind of did the visit check here, right? So you don't really need to do a visit here. And basically what we're going to do at the end is that after we visit the entire queue, right, we pull all the elements out of the queue. And then what we're going to do is that we're just going to uh, return the, the, the visited 2D array that we built. And then we're also going to do the same process for the Atlantic table as well. So we basically going to, so you can see here, 
after we finish this, pretty much our queue is empty, right? So we're going to add the first row, sorry, the last column and the last row onto the onto our queue. And then we're just going to call this BFS method. We pass in the queue. And then we're just going to get our Atlantic table. So at the end, we're just going to iterate each and every single cell. We Just like I mentioned before, we do a linear scan. And if this cell is both visited in both table, then we mark, we add this coordinate onto our result list. Um, and then at the end, you can see here, we're going to return our result list. So this is basically how we solve this problem using a uh, BFS problem, a BFS approach. And the time complexity will be M times N. Um, M is basically the, 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 um, how many rows we have in our heights and n is basically the number of columns that we have in our uh in our table right in our in our heights uh 2d array and the space complexity is also the same um so now let's take a look at these uh the the dfs approach so the, the dfs approach basically is the same thing um so you can see here what i did is i also add those things and but what I did differently here is I iterate the row, right? The first row, this iterate function, right? So you give me which row you want to iterate and you give me a, uh, a visited table, right? A Boolean visited table. And then I iterate that row and I do a DFS function for each and every single row. So the idea is pretty much the same, right? Like I, I, I start at those, the first row, sorry, the first column. And for each and every single cell, I do a DFS search to um to to visit the cells that are uh, that are bigger than or equal to the current cell um, and if it's not visited right so uh, probably I should change this to DFS instead of BFS but basically you can see oh sorry not this one yeah this is the DFS function so basically uh, you can see here um, I also have an iterate column so you give me the column I iterate each and every single cell, and then I basically uh, do a DFS function to uh, traverse to basically traverse all the cells that are qualified, right? So in this case, you can see here I have a DFS function, and it takes the row, it takes the column, and it takes the visited table, right? So we mark the current cell as true because we visit it, and then what we're going to do is that for the current cell, if we want to go to top, then we want to make sure we can, right? So first we check to see if the, the cell that, we were, that we're about to go to is actually bigger than or equal to the current cell's value. And we also wanna make sure that uh, the cell that we were, are about to go to is actually not visited yet, right? So if it's not visited, we're, about, we're going to do a DFS to go there, right? So we're gonna do that for all four directions, okay? And then you can see here, um, back to the, the main function, right? So after we iterate the rows, iterate the columns, we, for each and every single cell, we do a DFS and then we come back. And then in this case, we're also going to do that for the Atlantic uh, table. We're going to build the Atlantic table and the Pacific table. Then we just do a linear scan to see if those cells are visited. If the current coordinate is visited for both Atlantic and Pacific Ocean, then we can just add it onto our list. Uh, at, the, at the end, you can see we're just adding the, um, the, the, the result list to uh, return the result list to um, for this function and the time complexity is also the same so the time complexity is big O of m times n for both the bfs and the dfs function so there you have it and thank you for watching